Hi everyone, it's the Tides Changing here, and welcome to a Sims 3 speed build. This might come as a bit of a surprise because I haven't had a Sims 3 video up on my channel in well over a year, which I'm really sorry about. I've been meaning to get back into The Sims 3 for a while now, and I'm finally doing that. This house is for a new Let's Play that I'm going to be starting very soon. The first part of it should be going up the day after this video does, or if not tomorrow, then it'll be up a couple days from now. But I'm making a starter houseboat for that Let's Play, and as you can see, it's of course going to be set in Isla Paradiso, and I'm really excited to get this Let's Play started, and the reason why I decided to do a Sims 3 Let's Play is that I've been really missing The Sims 3, and there were a lot of things in it that I haven't explored myself, and one of the main things I haven't really explored is the Island Paradise expansion pack. So this Let's Play is going to cover a lot of the things that came with that expansion pack, but it's not really going to be an Island Paradise Let's Play. Like, I'm not going to call Let's Play The Sims 3 Island Paradise, because while we'll, fo while we'll focus on a lot of things that came with that expansion pack, it's mainly going to be about living out The Sims' lives and following their stories, and, as, and um, later on into the series, I do want to include aspects of university life, so this Let's Play will incorporate both of those expansion packs because the Sims who will be following the series are a single father and his daughter, so the father will mainly do Island Paradise related things and then once she's old enough, the daughter, who is a child at the beginning of the Let's Play, will be going off to university. And I'm just really excited to see where the series goes, but you'll learn more about the Sims and their backstories and all of that in the first part of the Let's Play. I'm not sure if I'm going to do Sims 3 speed builds very often. If I get an urge to do something in the Sims 3, then of course go ahead and do it, but I have so many things I want to do in the Sims 4 that I don't know if I also want to throw doing a bunch of Sims 3 speed builds into the mix with that. We'll see what happens. I might do a Sims 3 speed build here and there if I really have something that I want to make in The Sims 3 that I can't quite do in The Sims 4. But there definitely will be building videos related to this Let's Play because they won't be living in this house for the rest of their lives. I'll definitely be making a nicer home for them at some point in the future. Also, I plan to do the whole resort running thing, so there will definitely be renovation videos for the resort and if they do make enough money in the future maybe I'll even make a resort for them from scratch. We'll see how that goes. I, I do actually want that to happen. Like I think it'd be pretty cool to have them get enough money to be able to build a whole new resort from scratch because I'm going to start off with that one resort that the game gives you for free. I actually haven't done anything with running resorts in The Sims 3 before, so I'm really looking forward to that. But getting on to this build now, uh, it's not really anything very spectacular, it's just a starter houseboat. But this is the first build I've done in The Sims 3 in a really long time, so I figured it'd be good to share the whole process of making that with you all. I believe this house costs just under 16,000 simoleons. So a single sim can afford it right off the bat, which is pretty handy. It ends up costing less than it says in that thing on the top left corner. And I'm pretty sure that's because after I finished making everything, I went to live mode for a little bit before putting it into the bin. And I believe in The Sims 3, the depreciation of the cost of items holds up, like when you upload it and then download the house again. I know in The Sims 4, it resets all the items to what they would cost if they were new, but I don't think The Sims 3 did that, so that's why this house ends up being a bit cheaper than the cost thing in the top left corner says it is. Also, I named this house Seafoam after the bright seafoam green wood that I used on the outside of it. It may seem like sort of an odd color, but I do like how it looks and I thought that would be a perfect name for this house. But it was kind of weird going back to The Sims 3. I was a little bit rusty at first, it took me a little bit to adjust to the controls, but it didn't take me as long as I thought it would. I did find myself like at times going to where things would be in The Sims 4. But um, after a while I got back into the habit of The Sims 3 controls and things came back to me pretty quickly. Like it didn't take me too long to get the hang of building in The Sims 3 again. And it was really fun to have creative style back. Like I definitely enjoyed putting that to use and being able to be a little bit more creative and use patterns on things that don't have patterns in The Sims 4. However, having create a sim did make this house take longer to make than doing something similarly sized in The Sims 4 would have taken. 
And that was more so because I just kept going through all the patterns, and it was pretty much just because I was like, ooh, I can do this again. But something like this in The Sims 4 probably would have taken me an hour, maybe an hour and a half to make, whereas this house took me three, maybe four hours, so it took about twice as much time to make. We're actually on to the interior now though, which is pretty bare bone, because again, this was a starter houseboat, but I tried to make it look as nice as I possibly could. So what happened here was I was originally planning on using that all-in-one bathroom, but then I realized it cost like 4,500 simoleons and there just was not enough money left to put that in, so I had to put in a regular old bathroom. Except there really isn't a whole lot of space in here, so I was trying to figure out how to be able to fit in everything I needed in there. So as you can see, I just sort of rearranged the walls and the doors. And the space upstairs is a bit tight, but I did playtest this a lot and the Sims can get around and everything. Here I'm working on the kitchen slash dining area. The cheapest counters that come with The Sims 3 are really ugly, so I didn't want to use them and use those door ones. Can't remember the name of them. It was like base something. Don't remember what it was. Uh, I think it was like Bayside or something like that, but instead of having the normal dining table and chair set up, I thought it would look better to have an island counter with some bar stools at it. And there's only two of them, so that's really all they need. So that's it for that part of the house. Now moving on to the living room area. And I ended up using this really ugly milk carton, cardboard, gross mattress couch. Just because it was really cheap and I guess with the coloring, like using different patterns on it, you can make it look sort of decent. So I just went ahead and used that. Um, even though it looks cheap, I still think it looks sort of nice. Like this place doesn't look too horrible. And we're also getting a rug in here as well. So for the rug, I just end up going with a lighter blue color. So I do use a lot of blues and greens throughout this house just because I felt like that one with the sort of sea island theme I wanted, and I actually did want to go for sort of a nautical theme with this place. I also added in the matching chair because I thought that this living room area could use something else, so I just stuck it up there next to the TV. I also added in one of the cheapest bookshelves, so your sims can use that for skill building. And it seems like items are cheaper in The Sims 3, like it's easier to make a cheap house than it is in The Sims 4. It just really seems like that to me. But then again, you also start out with a lot less money, so I guess it kind of evens out that way. Like it just really seems like so many of the items are cheaper, like all the decorative items are really, really cheap. But that's pretty much all the furniture I think I put in there. I'm also adding in this university poster over here just because I wanted something on the wall, but I wanted something cheap. and. Those university posters are pretty cheap to put in there. Now I'm getting in the wallpaper. So for the wallpaper, I went with a light gray color throughout the whole place. So this is a subtle stripe pattern, but I made it so you can hardly see that the walls are striped. And I thought it'd be nice just to have this whole place have sort of a bright look to it. So I figured that whole thing out pretty shortly here. So I think this, yeah, that's the color I ended up going with for that wall. And then I thought it would be kind of neat and would really go with the nautical theme I wanted for this place to have one wall that was just paneling. So I used pretty much the same paneling that I used on the outside and just made it a white color. Also swapped that TV out for a slightly nice one just because I really didn't like how that one looked. And I also wasn't happy with the color of the bookshelf so yeah here's where I go for a blue color. That'd be kind of cool to have a blue color for that bookshelf, so I went with that. And then to go with the theme I wanted for the place, I threw in that... What was it? Life Preserver? Yeah, that's all for the first floor, so now we're going up to the second floor. So the first thing I did was a bathroom. And I just used the cheapest plumbing for everything, because there was not a whole lot of money left to furnish with. So we got the cheapest shower, the cheapest sink, cheapest toilet. I didn't add any decorations in here other than that toilet paper roll, like that's about it. I didn't really need to put anything else in there anyway because it is a pretty small space. I'm also getting all the flooring up here. thought about using carpet at first but I do end up just going back to the wood. I actually spent the longest time trying to figure out the flooring for this bathroom. Like at first I was going to go with this which was a tile pattern but then it just looked like having a countertop or like a backsplash on your floors which I didn't really like. It just didn't look floor enough, so I do change it later on. And then for the wall color, I thought it'd be kind of cool to use this paneling paint combo, so I do use a dark navy blue kind of a color, which went with the whole theme I was imagining for this place, and then now I'm going back to the flooring here. So what I do end up going for is just a black and white checkered flooring. 
The next room I worked on was the father's bedroom. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough space in it to be able to put the bed out in the middle of the room, so I just had to stick it up against one of the walls. But that's fine, he can still sleep in it, it's all good. And I actually didn't put window coverings anywhere on this house, just because at the time I didn't think I was going to have enough money. But when I go to put The Sims for the Let's Play in this house, I'll have a little bit of money left over, so that's something I'll be sure to add in. But for this room, I wanted to go for a sort of blue theme at first because I did make The Sims' favorite color aqua. So I wanted to incorporate that in the furnishings in this room. Uh, right now I'm taking care of the whole dressing area. Oh, I don't think I mentioned this yet, but this is actually the first time I built a houseboat. And another one of the things I've hardly done in The Sims 3 is play with the houseboat. So that's something else I'm excited to do in this Let's Play. Here I was just changing up the pattern on the bed, I thought some stripes would look nicer, and then I was going to go with a red color scheme, but eventually I do go back to a blue one because the Sims' favorite color was aqua, so I figured I should use the Sims' favorite color in the room. But I do stick with these patterns and everything, it's just really the color that changes. I also threw in one of those cushions that came with, it came with a store set, I'm pretty sure it was the Bohemian Garden set, um, we also got one of those posters. Here we're getting the wallpaper in, so I just went with another brighter color for these walls, although I do change it from a green to more of a white. And then I did the same thing that I did downstairs in the living room, and I put in the, that wood paneling wall along where the bed is. That's it for that room though, so the last bit of furnishing I have to do is the daughter's room. So for this room I wanted to have a sea theme, so I used this pattern on the bed. I thought that was really cute and be perfect for a child's room on a houseboat. I actually spent the most time in this room on this whole area right here where the end table and the bed is. Just really had trouble finding exactly what I wanted to use. I was cheap and all. Then I realized that this bed had a pattern where you didn't see that flower on the headboard. So I just swapped the bed out for that one with that headboard pattern and then was trying out a few different things for the end tables. And then I thought it would look better just to go with a bed that matched the one that was in the father's bedroom. So there we go, that's the bed that I ended up settling on. And uh, I go through a couple of more choices for the end table. So yeah, this is the one that I ended up using, and then I just have a white wicker on the bottom there. And then I wanted to use one of the cute kids lamps, uh, pretty sure that's from the store. So I just used that, made it an orange color. I did that because the daughter's favorite color was orange, so I was trying to incorporate some orange objects in this room. So like I, for this rug here, I wanted to have some orange colors on it. And then we also get a dresser in there as well, gotta have a dresser. I also had hardly any money at this point, so I wasn't able to buy much more stuff for this room. I did want to have some kind of skill building object in here because the daughter's whole thing is that she really loves learning and just wants to learn how to do so many different things. So I wanted to have a bunch of different skill building items for her, but unfortunately I was only able to fit one in here and then they're running out of money, so I had to go with the cheapest one, which was that stove. I was going to make the walls in this room orange, but orange didn't really look that great in this room. So I just used that green instead, I think that looks a lot better. But this house is almost done, all I have left to do is just change the colors of some things, just to finish everything off and make sure it all looks good. So I did brighten up the floors a little bit, just make it look a little bit brighter and lighter in this house, and just moving a few things around. I also figured I should give this chair a little bit more color since it was white up against a white wall. So I go for a nautical striped look for it. And really there's not a whole lot else that I do with this house. But I did have a lot of fun making this house, definitely enjoyed going back to The Sims 3, definitely felt fresh after not playing it for over a year, and I hope you all enjoyed seeing another Sims 3 build for the first time in a very long time. I'm sorry it wasn't a very grand build, but we'll see uh, what I do in the future. I mean, maybe I will go ahead and do some more Sims 3 builds. We'll see what happens. But if you do want to download this, I will have a link in the description. That's all I wanted to say, so I hope you enjoy the rest of this video.